What's going on folks? Ted from Nerd Immersion here and it is time for a DM's Guild Roundup review. I'm jazzed because I got three really good ones, some that are kind of simple, and one that's if you're looking to get a brand new level 1 to 20 class with a little more complexity than we're used to seeing from Wizards of the Coast, I've got you covered. I also want to come out and say, hey look, that number now says 96k and that's because all of you seem to be coming out in droves and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And just commenting on the videos, driving up the view count, and so on. And I can't thank you enough. I personally, you may not have seen it in the amount of videos that I've made thus far this year. But I felt like I've been in a funk for the first eight months of the year. And it really, I'm feeling like I'm coming out of it now. I'm crushing through my backlog. I feel more enthusiastic. More creative juices flowing. And I can't thank all of you enough for being the ones who inspire me to keep doing that. That is enough of me being sappy, though. Let's talk about this Roundup review. It's a week late because of Gen Con. But the way this works is I pick some titles off the DMs Guild. Now, yes, the DMs Guild does sponsor this video, but they don't give me any parameters or requirements around what I talk about. I can pick any content off the DMs Guild, whether it was made yesterday or five years ago. I'm not bound by anything there, and I'm technically also not bound to say anything specific. I can give you my honest review of everything we talk about, and I know a lot of you do come to these videos because you like that I don't kind of sugarcoat things. I give you my honest feelings about whatever I'm talking about. So I also typically pick three titles because I feel like that's the sweet spot. I could pick more, I could pick less, but I, I feel like three gives me a little bit enough to give you three unique titles. And again, this can obviously change. I can do more DMs Guild reviews uh, if folks want to, but this is just a standing monthly thing. And you know what? To try something different because I'm feeling out of that funk. I have a coupon code. It's in the video description of every DMs Guild. It's Herald Nerd 5 and that will get you 5% off any DMs Guild title, uh, community created title uh, of $5 or more. However, uh, my new code that I get once a month that lasts for basically the first week or so of the month, uh, in this instance is 101 nerds. So 101 nerds. I'll get you 10% off any community created content of $10 or more. And that's actually going to run through the 28th of August. So you've got that long to use that 10% off. And if you miss that, just hang around because next month I'll get another code. So what do I have to talk to you about today? Well, we've got a little bit of something for everybody. I feel like I say that every time, but I do that on purpose. We have 101 storytelling questions for world building by Matthew Conjaro, I'm going to say. Best Electrum Seller just, okay, Best Electrum Seller and came out the 4th of August. That is eight days ago as of me recording this, and it is a Best Electrum Seller already with seven perfect five-star ratings. It's $2.97, so the coupon code won't work on this particular item, but we're going to dive into it. And basically, it is what it says it is. It's a bunch of awesome prompts. If you ever get stuck in a rut, again, kind of like I felt like I've been in for the whole year, where you need, you're trying to build your world, you don't know what to do, these are storytelling prompts that you can either use for yourself or at your table. Uh, the next one that will come up after that is Tessa Presents 60 Campaign Maps Volume 1. This was added back in March, but was updated as recently as June. Again, a best gold seller with seven perfect five-star ratings. It's just a variety of maps for you to use. No one's going to say no to have an extra map on hand that you can just whip out and use when need be. And lastly is the Alchemist class by Terran Indestructible Boy Pounds, a friend of mine who you may have seen in my Vecna one-shot. This was released back at the end of June, has six perfect five-star ratings, and is a best silver seller uh, and is a brand new martial based alchemy class, as in not dealing with magic per se, uh, dealing with bombs, explosives, and things of the like. So let's start off with 101 story questions for world building. Again, there's not a ton of uh, pages here, but it is packed with a lot of information. It also, it gets a pass for me on not having bookmarks because one, it's eight pages and the content is, you know, obviously I think five pages and it's basically a rolling table. So you don't necessarily need bookmarks on a rolling table. So if we dive in, page four starts this sort of what is this about, right? So it says these can be usable in-game, pre-game, or before you're prepping when you're looking to either build out, hey, the party is in this town, what's going on? Maybe I'll pull a prompt. Hey, I don't know what's going to do. They're pivoting mid-game. Let's pull a prompt, right? 
So it says these may be used for DMs or players, right? So not just the DM, if the player is looking to expand their story or something like that, they could pull from one of these prompts to maybe help build that out to give the DM some ideas on how to further engage their character in the story. Um, it says these questions may be asked by players or asked about NPCs. It says how to make the most out of this question list. Collaborative world building relies on a sense of trust among all the players. It is best to set guidelines with the DM to determine the impact of these answers. Some DMs may accept any question response as an instant fact, while some may suggest use it as a suggestion. Communicate all expectations first, including answer length, if only one character may be involved, with any plot impact, blah, blah, blah. Questions may be asked of multiple people and answered multiple times. Different answers to the same question or any shared responses will further enrich your story. Uh, it says, for groups comfortable with improvising, asking some of these questions in-game may lead to role-playing moments and storytelling by players or through the voice of NPCs. And then you can see starting on page 5 through page 8, we have a 100 different questions. So let's pick question number 7, right? What is a unique item your character owns? A keepsake or charm? This may or may not be a trinket. Okay, how about we jump to 86. A lot of fabrics and clothing in the current area are dyed a specific color due to the abundance of a local plant. What is the plant called? What color is so popular? So this could, again, that could be you asking the players and them filling it in and you just taking notes. Okay, they said it's daffodils and the color is yellow, whatever it might be. Or this might be like, hey, I need something to kind of flesh out my little area where the party's going to be. Oh, Everybody wears orange because they have marigolds as the premier flower around, something of that nature, right? All right, how about 77? Describe a place of undisturbed ruins. What was it? What unique monster could be there? What unique treasure or information might be recovered from visiting that location? And what is the reason it has not been excavated and explored? You could see like a simple question like that could write an entire encounter for your game or possibly even a whole one shot just based off of that. And you've got a hundred different options here for you to pick your brain. You could look through them, read them and just pick one. I think it's more fun if you roll it at random. Um, and I'd also be curious to give this a shot in game. Oh, there's even a 101 here. Describe a local landmark significant to some dragons or other powerful creatures. I'm going to save the alchemist for last. So next up we have Tessa presents 60 campaign volumes, or 60 campaign maps, volume one. We can see we do have a variety of bookmarks for this. But if we scroll down, it basically, I do appreciate what Tessa put in here at the start, right? About uh, free stuff, right? I compile tokens, handouts, maps, lists, and other things. Please check out r slash Tessa Maps Presents. There's an option there for feedback, uh, importing to a virtual tabletop, right? There's information there on how to best get it into your virtual tabletop of choice. There's also a printing guide, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then also, again, for black and white printing uh, and commercial printing, this has a large variety of different options when you download it to get different versions of things. But if you're looking to print these out and use them at the table, uh, follow these guidelines, ensure the correct printer is selected, make sure it's loaded with 11 by 17, and the paper is loaded for the MAPS 11 by 17 printable PDF. Set the page range you want, set the page to actual size, and so on. And then you can just start printing your maps. Here is all of the different maps here. And you can see we have, if I zoom this in a little bit so you can get a better look, uh, a variety of different maps from things like mazes. This is basically all festival, right? Pie eating in an inn, festival maze, swimming race, arm wrestling, uh, patty harvest, riddles, this is a whole, you know, you could do a whole lot with this, right? Badlands encounters, right? We're in sort of a desert, post-apocalyptic-y looking area. For the Badlands, here's a cursed town, right? You could use these in a Strahd game, something in Ravenloft, or something for your own game. Uh, and then again, Oasis City, CD Tavern, underground areas, gardens, university. Uh, and then here's a drowned city. So this is an underwater area. You get the point. I don't think I need to keep scrolling through these, but there are a ton of awesome maps that you can have at your disposal for use in a variety of different uh, campaign scenarios. And last but not least is The Alchemist, a martial blasting class of potent concoctions by Terran Indestructible Boy Pounds. So uh, we can see this is a brand new level 1 to 20 class with five different subclasses, the Animator, Apothecary, Fulminaire, uh, Salbanist, and Toxicologist. Uh, some of those you may be able to distinguish things, right? So the Animator is one that focuses on things like homunculi, 
which is a thing that we saw again. Not it's I don't necessarily know if it's 100% fair to compare this to the Artificer, but we all know that the Alchemist Artificer is uh, very underpowered in comparison to some of the other Artificers. But as someone who played the OG Artificer that had when there was like the Gunsmith and the Alchemist and you could throw like fire or acid bombs, I really liked that class. It was severely weak and underpowered. Uh, and this kind of gets me close to that. I will also say this is, again, a brand new level 1 to 20 class that's made here. It is a little more technical, a little more involved, so perhaps not necessarily the best for new players, but I think they could get by just fine in case. So let's go ahead and dive in. So um, I also like this little bit, playing an alchemist, kind of giving you a heads up of like what you can do, movement, action, bonus, action, reaction. And here is sort of our character table. It is a D8... Uh, based hit hit die based class with a focus on intelligence being sort of the main feature stat. And if we roll into what you can get, experimentalist adept at level one, uh, proficiency bonus is double for anything dealing with alchemy supplies. Um, a choose one and a skill proficiency of your choice. Additionally, you only need to provide five gold pieces worth of raw materials to any alchemical item you know the formula uh, for, worth fifty gold pieces or less. When you craft that item during a long rest, the maximum number of alchemical items you can create during said long rest is equal to your alchemist level plus your intelligence modifier. And it says this is basically a... There's a lot of uh, footnotes saying that this is basically an alteration, this particular one, uh, around the Xanathar's Guide Rules for Alchemy. Then we have alchemy, the sort of main function of your class, what you can do. Right, it says, you know the formula for basic acid, alchemist fire, antitoxin, basic oil, perfume, soap, and two other items of your choice. Each time you gain a level, you learn another formula. You find and discover other formula during your adventures if your DM were to populate things there. Uh, it says you could find the formula for a Tanglefoot bag at a potion settler, perhaps. Um, but anyway, the process of learning a formula takes two hours experimenting with your supplies. If you experimented on an al alchemical item or potion to do so, the item is destroyed in the process. The item has a rarity of common. The time required is doubled and doubles again for each rank of rarity above common. Catalyze is your sort of quick hit way to make something. So this is a bonus action. You create uh, an alchemical item. Um, you must have your hands free and the raw materials needed to do so. And basically, whatever this item is, it disappears after a minute. And there's a footnote that basically says the main items are presumed that you're basically in a controlled environment in your lab doing things properly. Catalyze is you basically slapdashing, MacGyvering something together to make something to be able to use in the moment. And then potency, it says, right, you have trained in the use of said items, so the potency in your hands of alchemist fire is better than it would be in mine. Uh, you can throw any alcohol, the range for alchemical items being thrown is doubled. Being within five feet, throwing and making a ranged attack does not provoke dis or impose disadvantage on your throw. And you can use your intelligence modifier instead of strength or dex when making an attack roll with alchemical items. Uh, again, if it has a saving throw, it's based off your intelligence. Alchemical Practice comes online at second level. This is sort of, again, your subclass feature. Eureka now says uh, you can use your bonus action granted by the Catalyst feature that we already talked about to create a potion with a rarity equal to common. Uh, lasts for the same duration as the alchemical item you created during uh, Catalyze. And essentially, you can start to craft rarer potions as you level up. Uh, you uh, can make a medicine check as a bonus action and as well as use the object use an object action. When you draw an item from your inventory, uh, you can draw, uh, as part of your object interaction, you can draw or stow two items at once. Standard ability score improvements. At fifth level, you do not get extra attack, at least for this subclass, but any items you create via Catalyze, the sort of quick hit one, now have a 10 minute potency as opposed to one minute. At seventh level, you're also now able to mix things together uh, as far as making things so you can get both benefits. Um, the combined item still loses its potency after 10 minutes. And there's also a thing that says if you're using the mixing potions, potion miscibility table, um, it specifically has the word safely in there so that you don't accidentally mix your two items and blow yourself up. Uh, mercurial flux. When you create an alchemical item, you can replace the raw materials uh, required with valuables, such as gold pieces of value equivalent, which is pretty cool. You're able to make use with kind of what you have. Uh, volatile potency. When you damage, uh, deal damage or healing, with an alchemical item or potion you created, you roll an additional die of the same type and add it to it. 
If it has multiple sizes, you roll an additional time using the largest die. This gets bumped up again later on. Mind over matter continues with that sort of intelligence in place of things. So when you make a strength or dex ability check or saving throw, you can use your reaction to give yourself a bonus equal to your intelligence modifier, similar to the Artificer's Flash of Genius, but just for yourself. When you're subjected to an effect that allows you to make a strength or dex save to only take half damage, you instead take no damage if you succeed or ha a half if you fail. So basically evasion. Uh, then you get the Philosopher's Stone, which is a big, you know, alchemy-based item. It takes seven days to make it. Uh, while you're within a mile of it, you are immune to disease and cannot be naturally or magically aged. You can use the object action to manifest a non-magical item that you can fit in your hand. It has a value of 50 gold pieces or less, uh, once per long rest. Again, alchemy making you be able to make gold, that makes sense. Or you can use it to replace any material component of any spell of your choice, but if you do so, it consumes the stone. Uh, at 18, it's lightning in a bottle. You can create, uh, when you create a potion with a Eureka feature, you can now create a potion with a very, uh, rarity of very rare. Um, and once you do so, you're limited for seven days. And then lastly, we have Big Bang. Uh, when you roll initiative, you can use the use an object action, no action required, once per short or long rest. Now, again, like I said, we have a variety of subclasses here. The one that kind of takes me as close to what I was when I played in our Curse of Strahd campaign is the Fulminaire, the sort of bomber explosive one. So let's take a look at what they get. They get instruments of destruction, proficiency with potter's tools, which makes sense to make your bombs, uh, and the formula for a Thunderstone, which is discussed later, or one alchemical item of your choice if you already know the Thunderstone. And whenever you deal bludgeoning with an alchemical item that deals bludgeoning fire, or sorry, deal damage either bludgeoning fire or thunder damage and roll the highest value on the damage die, you get to roll again, essentially giving you a miniature exploding dice just that one time though then you get phlogiston theory which basically allows you to alter the way you create things right so the material must have a value of at least 5 gp and for each additional material the item gains the corresponding effect this is when you're making an item that deals bludgeoning uh, acid or, or sorry bludgeoning fire or thunder damage so you can use uh make it out of a shell out of a nut as opposed to a pot uh, and then it breaks and does difficult terrain within a 10 foot area where it breaks Quartz adds a daze effect. Uh, saltpeter, all creatures within 10 feet must make a deck save or take the effect of the item, right? The nutshell just kind of makes difficult terrain. Saltpeter makes it an AoE. Powdered Arcane Focus, uh, when you take an attack, roll a d6 and it changes the damage type. Hit the deck is when you are forced to make a dexterity saving throw against an effect you can see. You can use your reaction to move up to half your speed immediately before the effect occurs, potentially moving out of the area of danger, which is a pretty cool effect, like a, a sort of like a backup evasion, right? You're um, This could have been like a way you could alter the Barbarian's danger sense as well, as opposed to just advantage on dexterity saving throws. When they're forced to make a deck save, they can use their reaction to move half of their speed immediately away before it occurs. Like, oh, that's bad time. They're out. Then it goes off, so you may be far enough away to take no damage. And then Chemical Warfare at 10 bumps up the uh, potency of some of these. Uh, nutshell goes out to 15-foot area, uh, deals double damage to objects. Quartz is extends the duration of the stun. Saltpeter increases the AoE to 15 feet. Powdered Arcane Focus lets you roll 3d6 and pick which one you'd like. And then Spontaneous Combustion at 14. Now when you do uh, roll Bludgeoning Fire Thunder damage and get the highest value... Uh, you roll an additional die. Again, if that happens, to, now the exploding dice are just perpetuating. So if you do a damage that does 3d6 and you roll a 1, 5, and a 6, you can then re-roll that 6 again. And if you keep nailing 6s, you can keep re-rolling 6s until you eventually don't and then just amass a large amount of damage. Then we have the Salmonist, which is your oil user, and your Toxicologist, which would be your poison user. There is expanded rules in here regarding downtime. Uh, again, as an alchemist, someone crafting potions and salves and things of that nature. Uh, it is a uh, Some of it is supplanted information from the DMG and Xanathars. But again, we're adding some more information here to, as well as adding things for foraging for more all materials. And then we have some brand new equipment, which is probably some of the coolest stuff, giving you a lot of things that fit in an alchemy, right? like, like an Alembec, a Crucible, earplugs, things that would be useful for someone who's dealing with all sorts of explosions and whatnot. We have costs, weight, and then a little description of what they do, if they do anything mechanical or not. A couple new equipment packs as well, astronomers, demolitionists, detectives, and mediciner. Uh, and then we have uh, the so containers, right? That's an important part of 
alchemy, right? Especially if you're going to be making something like a little bomb, it needs to have a container in which to house it, which is why all of these are listed here. And then here is probably my favorite part of it is the new alchemical items, because even if you are not going to play the alchemist, these are awesome. And this I like a lot because it takes me back to what I remember from 3.5 bringing in a lot of both the same names and the abilities, just 5 e -ifying them, right? I see things like sun rods, tanglefoot bags, thunderstones. I see the various different oils like ghost oil, dwarf blind stones, all these different kinds of items, salves or one-off uses. So like a sun rod, for example, is basically a glow stick. You crack it and it lights up, but it doesn't give off heat. So it's just a light source, right? A tanglefoot bag was essentially like a bola, but it's made out of an explosive sticky thing that you'd throw at somebody and try to tangle them up so they couldn't run away. Thunderstone basically being like a flashbang grenade um, with thunder damage. Dwarf blind stone, we can scroll down and take a look, but essentially is also similar to a flashbang, but it's designed in such a way to knock out someone's dark vision. The concept being that probably in a tunnel, a bunch of dwarves are using their dark vision as an advantage. You throw a dwarf blind stone there, and if they fail the saving throw, it knocks out their dark vision. So now they're literally just in the dark. Really, really cool stuff here. Um, let's see. There's even different kinds of candles that provide different benefits. Insect bane is one we've seen from uh, Tomb of Annihilation to keep bugs away. Um, all right. Dark vision powder, you gain gray powder that can't be seen with normal vision for more than 10 feet away. It's often used by creatures with dark vision to write messages hidden in plain sight. While viewed with dark vision, the powder glows brightly, so this could be, again, almost like an invisible ink. Here's the dwarf blind stone, right? An action, throw it out to 60 feet. Once it strikes a hard surface, it releases a burst of violet light in a 20-foot radius. Creatures in that area with dark vision must make a DC 10 deck save or lose their dark vision for 10 minutes. Uh, instant rope is pretty cool. It's just like a flask that you pour out this gray liquid and then it solidifies into a rope, which is pretty cool. Um, healing draught is basically a healing potion, but instead of it magically gifting you healing, it essentially allows you to roll hit dice to heal. Mm. Again, the various oils providing a very a variety of different benefits. Most of some of these that I recall here, like uh, ghost flame oil and things, I think I remember some of these being enchantments that you could put on magic items. Here, they're in the form of oils. Uh, simple soap. Uh, Sparkstone. Uh, that's basically um, like a tinder, uh, like a box of tinder to kind of make a start a fire. Smelling salts. Here's the smoke stick, which is essentially a smoke grenade. Again, as I mentioned, the sun rod, a one foot long gold tipped iron rod, glows bright, brightly when struck. Light in 30 foot radius, bright light, 30 foot radius, dim light. Lasts for six hours before it just kind of burns out as a one off. Uh, Thunderstone again. Uh, throw it within 20 feet uh, with either the attacker using an object action. When it strikes a hard surface, it creates a deafening bang, forcing creatures within 10 feet. Uh, to make a DC 10 con save or take thunder damage and be deafened. Again, uh, then we see a variety of different torches as well. Uh, some new poisons to use for the poisoners out there. And then I also really appreciate this appendices that basically shows the design notes from the creator. Uh, a list of different material components that you can feel free to use to make up the recipes for your alchemist. Uh, and then again, some FAQs so on as well as some character statistics for you to utilize if you want to add them to your game and then again a nice little play test change log to show what was adjusted up or down based on player feedback dating all the way back to uh dating back to when uh the when it first came out right the the 10th of june so there you go folks that is your dm's guild roundup review for the day a little bit, uh, or for the month, I should say, for a little bit for everybody. I like the Alchemist a lot. I think it's really cool. Like I said, it could be a little more minutia and number keeping for some folks. But if you want to play someone who is cool with alchemy and like the old school spell casting from what we think about in the real world where you're using different sorts of magic, which is essentially just chemistry and potions, uh, and don't want to have to delve into the realm of actual magic, the Alchemist might be something for you. So... Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Once again, 101 nerds is the code to get 10% off 10 uh, community created content of $10 or more. And that runs till the 28th of August. I will see you all next time.